Hi, I just want to talk quickly about why you should move to Spain. Um, I said the same nearly seven years ago about the Philippines. We moved out there, got property out there, I've done quite well. Um, but we've moved on to Spain now because the kids are getting to schooling age. And quite simply, Spain seems a good place to be. Um, I'm still keeping my job, so it's not really a case of worrying about job changes or whatever, uh, which is why this is more relevant to people that make money online or retired or have other streams of income. Um, unless you're in Barcelona or Madrid or some of those places, because there's a lot of work out there for people that speak English. And when I say a lot, I mean, there's people getting English jobs without any qualifications in the main cities. So, it's not difficult to find work. Um, where I am, it is because there's no work for the locals, never mind anybody else, um, especially this time of year being December. But anyway, <clears throat> the point being, if you've got income external, come out to somewhere where I am. If you're looking to travel and live in somewhere a bit more exciting than where you currently are, go to Barcelona. Um, you can find work there easily enough. People want people that speak English, um, so the opportunity is there. Now, where we are, we'll go back to this, is this is a two bedroom apartment. It's got a laundry area downstairs and out the back, um, which also acts as my bike storage area, and external garden area, whatever we call it. It's inside the middle of the building. Um, it's for us only. So I've got quite a lot of space there. Then we've got a solarium on the roof, um, which is good for enough laundry, but also you can sit up there in the summer. And we were, if you've seen the other video, we're actually within walking distance of the beach. Um, I could stick my head out the window and actually see the sea from here. Um, that's how close we are. But also we have the market just out the door, turn left, and it's there every Wednesday, um, which gets onto another thing is like the food produce. Um, we bought five kilos of oranges for, I think it was three euros, no, two euros. And I bought two kilos of tangerine satsumas for one euro. Um, but you generally find the food is fantastic and it's generally cheap. People say it's more expensive in the UK, but I actually find people in the UK have got bad buying habits um, because uh, I live quite cheap in the UK as well. So I really, but there's a, there's a secret word here, it's called cooking. Um, doesn't matter where you are, if you can cook, then you're gonna save money in any way. But if you're living on microwave meals and stuff, then it's going to be expensive wherever you are. Um, but I find the food quite cheap here. Um, we haven't had a tin. We haven't had a tin in a month. We haven't had a uh, frozen meal in over a month because generally we don't. We're fresh produce people. Um, we do pretty well. Everything's pretty cheap. I like the oranges. It's not just about eating the oranges. Um, for five kilos or two euros, you can actually make your own orange juice for cheaper than you can buy cartons of orange juice. And obviously, it's fresh. I mean, it does get much fresher than you squeeze them yourself from fresh oranges, which are made locally. So <coughs> there's that. The apartment fairly big, aircon, um, got our own kitchen. Comes with all the white goods, um, beds already here. Literally just move in because it's like a holiday rental. It's 300 euros a month. Bills are up maximum probably 130 euros a quarter. Uh, sorry, every uh, month. But I'm expecting it to probably be about that every two months because we don't actually have the air conditioning out um, too much. We might have it on like if it's cold at night for an hour or something, but we're not really using it. Um, in the summer, maybe a little bit different, but we'll wait and see. But 
when I come here, I was expecting it to be a bit more expensive, and I'll be honest with you, it's pretty much on par with life in the Philippines. Um, Budget-wise, cost of living, like renting a place, you'd be um, just like 300 euros, about 250 pounds, which is probably about 16,000 pesos, if we were talking Philippines money. That'll get you a house in the Philippines, but you're, you're not going to get it fully furnished like this for the for 16,000 um, and the same build quality. You're also not going to be right on the beach. Um, food quality, the prices are either the same as they are in the Philippines or cheaper here for most things. That's the bizarre thing. The Philippines should actually be cheaper than here. It's not. Um, everything is pretty much a lot cheaper than you would expect. But that it's also comparable to standard of living. This is the other thing people forget in the Philippines. You know, I get people that argue with me. Hey, you know, I can do it much cheaper. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. Yes, you're living in a nipper hut. And it was a little bamboo hut with like a straw roof um, compared to a house. <laughs> you know, um, I could live on the streets for virtually nothing. It doesn't mean it's comparable. You know, I'm sure if anybody lived on the street homeless, where whatever country they're in, um, it's all comparable. It's exactly the same because begging, they're still looking for the next meal, etc., etc. That's not comparable. What's comparable um, is this standard of living because this is what I call an acceptable standard of living. This is like a uh, this is a Western standard of living. Um, if you want to slam it or whatever, go ahead, but don't grumble uh, and make a comparison between this and your, the way you live, because quite simply, the different lifestyles. Um, internet here can be a bit expensive um, for good internet. At the same time, it's still comparable to the Philippines. Everything is. The prices are pretty similar. But now we get to the nitty gritty, I still work in the UK. So when I talk about the UK and I said to you, this, this costs 300 euros a month, which is about 250 pounds. For a similar side place where I live in the UK, it's 700 pounds a month. If I said to you, the council tax on this, like the annual tax is only about I don't know, maybe seven, ten euros a month. Uh, in the UK, it's one thousand three hundred and thirty pounds for something of this size. Um, the cost of living in the UK is, has gone through the roof, and I mean, you look at most of the salary rates; they have not changed that much. But what I have here, which is why we're in a holiday destination, which is why this all makes sense. Yes, there's a bus route outside, and because we're in a holiday place, it goes straight to the airport. The advantage of that is obviously going to work in the UK for Monday morning and coming back Friday night, I have a valid route to the airport. Now, the other thing is that's not comparable for most people, um, but that's why I said if you're doing other stuff that makes money, whether you're retired, I don't need to make my money, or you're making money online, or you're a professional gambler, whatever it is. If you don't need to be at work Monday or Friday, you're going to be uh, quitting for being out here. Uh, for me, the flights to the UK are stupidly cheap, which makes this all worthwhile. And the next thing is to try to negotiate a weekly rate from one of the air couriers because I'll be going backwards and forwards um, on a regular basis um, because I'm pretty much a guaranteed seat every week. Uh, so when I say that, I mean I've had flights from £45 one way. So if you budget say a maximum of about £160 a week, um, which is quite high, but I think it can fly cheaper than that. Um, although this time of year flights are a bit more scarce um, and more expensive. It's all it's all comparable though. You know, it, uh, for example, 
if the flights are expensive, I just stay in the UK for two weeks flat, and then come back for two weeks. You know, it just work work around the work hours. But that's me personally. Um, but I just want to point out that it's cheap to live in Spain. 